Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. I'm back. So come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. Yes, it is Tuesday, June 4th, 2019. It's my first show for June. If you watch the show, if you follow The Daily Dope or TheGamingGang.com, you know that I was helping my mom move for... Well, most of last week, well, about halfway point of last week, through the weekend, and uh, when I got back Sunday night, I went to the Cubs game yesterday. So I'm wearing my Cubs gear once again. I see uh, the Madman is here. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you for welcoming me back. And yes, the move went pretty well. Although, I have to admit, I was not expecting to drive almost 1,900 miles myself. I thought uh, there would be a little division of the driving duties. But my mom's 76 years old, so I figured, "Eh, it's okay. (laughs) It's no big deal. I uh, I trust my driving skills, you know, more. Anyway, today is episode 311 of The Daily Dope. As you can see, the madman has joined me in chat because chat is available on YouTube. It is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of these stranger commenters at bay, but I do pay attention to the chat. So if you have a question or maybe you want to say howdy, or maybe there's something about Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the starter set that I'm going to unbox and take a first look at today, Maybe there's something you want to get a little closer look at. By all means, please chime in, and uh, we will do that. I always respond to chat. I see uh, Dan from No Enemies Here has arrived, saying that he missed me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, sure you did. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Yeah, I missed doing the show. I really did. I was kind of like, ah, you know, I'd be driving, I'm like, yeah, I'd be working on the show right now, getting the show ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, next week is going to be pretty weird, too, because uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to Origins or not yet. Going to have to find out. Anyway, do want to say, if you uh, watch the video and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you watch some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you dig them, by all means, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, be sure to ring that little bell because it will not only tell you when a new video is uploaded, which is going to be taking place after Origins, usually after the conventions and that, you'll see quite a few standalone videos be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, But you'll also be notified if you ring that bell when I go live within about five minutes or so. And of course, please tell a friend, tell two friends. I am soon going to be entering my 10th year of covering tabletop gaming. And uh, about my 42nd year (laughs) of being a gamer. So anyway, help spread the word. uh, So people know more about the GamingGang.com as well as the Gaming Gang channel, which features the Daily Dope. So, got some news today. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the games I still have on sale that I'm trying to use to fund uh, a trip to Origins. And, of course, as I mentioned, we are going to take a look at the starter set for the fourth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I've heard really good things about this starter set. I really have. So, uh, (laughs) Dan says, 10 years. Bloody hell, Jeff, you're an icon. Yeah, I'm, I'm an unknown icon, <laughs> if that's the case. <laughs> so, Anyway, got a little bit of news, got some cool stuff. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about a couple of Kickstarters, but they do look interesting. So that usually goes a long way for me to actually cover a Kickstarter. Plus, I took a look. These are companies that have multiple games out. One company I'm familiar with. I just 
haven't played a lot of their stuff over the years. But we're going to jump into the news, as I always like to point out. If you do not like the tabletop gaming news segment on the show, look in the show notes. You can skip right ahead if it's an hour or so later than when the uh, the show streams. So, because I can't make any changes like to the show notes. I can't push show notes up until the video stops rendering. It usually takes about an hour. But we should have a good-sized show today. So, with that said, let's move on into the news. Because there's a Weird West board game, which has arrived on Kickstarter. It's from Rock Manor Games, and I've got the dope. The few and cursed can best be described as a Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets the Old West comic book series about people trying to survive a world where most of the water evaporated overnight in a mysterious apocalyptic event back in 1840. The Few and Cursed is a deck-building adventure game based on the comic series of the same name. It takes place on a post-apocalyptic Earth where most of the water on the planet has been gone for 70 years. Even though what was left of mankind found a way to adapt using water, the most valuable asset on the planet, as currency, survival turned the world into a wicked wasteland where it's either kill or be killed. And evil not only endured, it won. People turned to dark arts, old tales of mischief and curses to survive. I had to turn to mischief to survive? <laughs> Such a little odd. Death is everywhere, but for every darkness there is light, and among the few and cursed are those willing to fight to bring balance to the land, the Cursed Chasers. In the game, players take on the role of a Cursed Chaser, looking to make a name for themselves by searching for supernatural artifacts, completing jobs, or bounty hunting. Players traverse the desert of the Pacific Ocean as they improvise and acquire new cards for their deck on their quest for fame or infamy. There is a short video, it's a little less than two minutes long, for this Kickstarter, so let's kick back. Kickstarter kick back? I guess. <laughs> let's sit back and check out the video. Make no mistake, you are about to experience hell. As the world fell, the cursed inherited the earth. It's time to get it back. Evil by evil. Monster by monster. Curse by curse. In the game, players compete to become a legend in the desert of the Pacific Ocean by completing jobs capturing bounties, and discovering supernatural artifacts. Each player will choose a unique curse chaser and start their turn by improvising and adding cards to their hand. After you leave the safety of San Andreas, you will face encounters that may disrupt your turn or offer you new ways to gain true grit or upgrade your character stats. Next, you will play cards to generate resources, move in position, and take one action to build your fame, or infamy. Be careful though, because as you play, powerful monsters will appear and make their way to San Andreas. You have to defeat them before they arrive, or the game is over. Welcome to the Few and Cursed, a curse chasing board game adventure. Red doesn't need your help with the chasing, but you are welcome to tag along for the adventure. The Few and the Cursed is for one to four players, ages 13 and up, plays in around an hour. The project is currently just past the halfway point to its funding goal, and you can reserve a copy of the Retail Edition for a $59 pledge, or the Special Kickstarter Deluxe Edition for a $79 pledge. Now, both of those do include unlocked stretch goals. And you can pledge your support through June 27th. Expected delivery is June 2020. I thought this looks kind of cool. I thought the premise of it is interesting. That's what really drew me in. And Rock Manor Games has some games out there. So it's not like 
This is a Kickstarter from some fly by nighter out there. And uh, yeah, I thought this looks pretty cool. I like the artwork. I think the artwork's pretty cool. It's got some miniatures to it. Although I gotta be honest, I think we've discussed this plenty of times. Not every board game needs miniatures. Standees work just as well if you can bring that price down. But you know what, $59 for the retail edition of this? Doesn't seem too, too bad, seems pretty fair. So definitely check this out if, uh, if your interest has been whetted. Mm -hmm. Now, those of you out there who are would-be detectives will want to take note that you'll be solving crimes in an upcoming title from Indie Boards and Cards. And I've got the dope on the Sherlock Files elementary entries. Said that five times fast. The Sherlock Files includes three confounding cases for you to solve. First, you'll need to discover the cause of a fatal heart attack aboard flight TJ-1309. Next, you will dig up a cold case from 1923, the violent and unexpected death of a famous explorer and archaeologist. Last, unravel the story behind the mysterious body that put a damper on one family's 4th of July party. Decipher clues that determine which are relevant to the case and which are not. Share the clues you deem relevant with your detective partners. Which theories will you chase? How will you fare compared to the world's greatest detective? Work together to solve each case to find out. The Sherlock Files Elementary Entries is for 1 to 8 players. Ages 14 and up, plays in around 40 to 60 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $24.99 when it arrives on August 7th. Gotta say, we're seeing a lot more games. Now, I have uh, I have the impression, now I, I can't say for sure. I do have the impression that the Sherlock Files elementary entries is going to kind of be one of those games where once you play the mysteries, that's it. You've already played them. Kind of like those escape room games that we see. Or um, the Exit series, as an example, from uh, Cosmos. We're seeing a lot more of these. We're, lots, we're seeing a lot more of these kind of one-and-done sort of games. I find that kind of interesting. I know some people have uh, complained about that. I look at it this way. Let's say you've got five people, right? It's kind of like a little, you know, game party thing that you do in board game party. You got five people over. 25 bucks for a game. That's five bucks a pop. Be a lot more expensive for you to go to the movies for two hours, right? So I don't know. I, I don't, I, I am not, I'm not against these one and done sort of games like some people are. I, I honestly, if there was, you know, I would probably look for a game that would be able to be replayed for the price. But you know what? This looks kind of interesting. But it is modern, so I think it's funny where it's like, huh, can you outdo Sherlock Holmes? It's like, of course I can. He'd be dead by now. Another Kickstarter that I wanted to bring you some information about is from Guerrilla Games because they have a new battle station. How in the world did that jump that way? Yikes. There we go. Video started playing too early. Anyway, Guerrilla Games has a new Battle Stations title. It's up for crowdfunding, and I've got the dope. Battle Stations Dirt Side is a cooperative board game for one to eight players featuring a full story-driven campaign, plus dozens of one-off missions. There are scores of unique planets to explore, including the homeworlds of every alien species from Dirt Side and its companion game, Battle Stations Second Edition. You and your friends are a team of heroes in the far future, landing your starship on mysterious planets with adventures such as raiding, rescuing, fighting, and escaping. In each mission, your team will have an objective to cooperatively accomplish. With threats like motor gangs, natural disasters, or planetary bombardment. I hate when they bombard the planet's surface. I hate that. Each planet has its own attributes like low gravity, lava flows, or tectonic drift. You can combine your actions to do fun things like ram a jet car into a building to turn the building into a crater, or try to put out a fire before it reaches your ship. Your characters start with a special ability, weapons, and an ability for your species. 
You gain experience over time, rank up, and can purchase equipment between missions, plus gain new abilities. If you own battle stations, your characters are already fully compatible with Dirtside, and you can transition seamlessly between battle stations, missions in space, and Dirtside, missions on planets. What will you discover, Dirtside? All right, so let's take a look at that video. This video is a bit longer. This is a little more than three and a half minutes. But uh, it will show off quite a bit of Battle Station's dirt side and what's in store. Remember board games in the 80s? We didn't have social media and streaming services. We would go to our friend's house and just game all night. The board games were drenched in theme. They were sandboxes with dozens of types of equipment and weapon abilities. They contained an infinity of stories. We all grew up, but some of us never forgot. Battle Stations debuted in 2004, letting players build their own starships and then fly them, inspiring other games like FTL. The Dice Tower rated Battle Stations Second Edition a must-own game. Over the years, players would ask for a way to play the game fully cooperatively without a game master, and they didn't want to just fly between planets, they wanted to land on them. So, we made Battle Station's Dirt Side, a game of raiding, rescuing, fighting, and escaping on the surface of alien worlds. A fully cooperative board game RPG hybrid for one to eight players with a full story-driven campaign. Yeah, and there's dozens of one-off missions also that you can knock out on a quick lunch break. Your character starts with a special ability, weapons, and an ability for your species. You can gain experience, rank up, purchase equipment between missions, and gain new abilities. It has the rich world and gameplay of a full-scale RPG, but the enemies are controlled by the game itself, and the mysteries in each mission are revealed as you go along. There are scores of worlds you can explore, including the home worlds of every alien species. Yeah, and every planet has its own unique attributes, like low gravity, lava flows, and random threats like weapon installations and motor gangs, and incredibly thematic rules for each type of terrain. And unlike other board games, Dirtside is not a flat world. Towers, jetpacks, vehicles, and ships let you rise above the surface in three dimensions. Battle Station's Dirtside isn't just a game, it's a complete game system where you can do crazy things like ramming your jet car into a building and turning it into a crater. Yeah, you can combine your actions together, like working together to put out a fire. It's like a Swiss Army knife. Pretty much anything you can think of, you can do because the rules are there if you need them. And it's intuitive because the cannons of a cannon installation or a cannon on a ship or a fighter or a drone all fight the same way. So you don't need to know different rules for different things. If you own battle stations, your characters are already compatible with dirt side. You can fly around in space and do a battle stations mission and then land on the ground and do a dirt side mission. Dirt side is also standalone and ready to play right out of the box. It's a game that creates emergent narrative. There's mission objectives within the stories that happen in the game, but then the players bring those stories to life and their choices are what make for the truly memorable moments. Yeah! I've been working on this game for 20 years and it still inspires me every day. And the best part about it is you making the game come alive, bringing your own thoughts and stories. Thank you for helping to build the Battle Stations community. And if you can, please share, comment below and help make the Battle Stations universe even bigger. Hit the ground running. What will you discover? Dirt side. Battle Stations Dirt Side is for one day players. It just launched on Kickstarter this morning and it's nearing, well, when I looked about three hours ago, it was almost at 200% of its funding goal. You can reserve a copy of the game plus all stretch goals that are unlocked for a $99 pledge, or you can get the deluxe edition, which doubles the number of minis and provides an additional copy of the rule book for a $145 pledge through June 27th. Expected delivery is March of next year. 
But as the madman pointed out, this does look interesting. This is why I'm sharing this Kickstarter. Uh, I, I think by now, 311 episodes into <laughs> the Daily Dope, I think the viewers know that I don't just throw Kickstarters out there just for the heck of it. So, yes, I thought this looked pretty cool. And we've got someone new in chat. Uh, Quico is, I'm going to take a guess, that's the pronunciation. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining us for the live show tonight. Anyway, I do want to point out, Gorilla Games, way back in the day, we're talking right after the gaming gang started, right, right about like 2011, they sent me some like Battle Station miniatures. They were like 15 millimeter Battle Station miniatures uh, to review, but I didn't have Battle Station, so I was like, so I have not played Battle Stations. I have not played the second edition, which I have heard very good things about as well. So uh, this is one to keep an eye on. I'll have to take a peek to see if uh, if Guerrilla Games is at Origins. Maybe uh, get a chance to uh, schedule an interview with Jeff. So just in time for Gen Con, here's my last news piece. Capstone Games will release the two-player card-driven game Watergate. I've just got a wee bit of the dope. Created by Matthias Kramer, Lancaster, Glenn Moore. Watergate pits one player acting as a journalist in the Bob Woodward, Carl Bernstein mold against an opponent who manages the efforts of the Richard Nixon White House to cover up the June 1972 break-in at the Watergate building. Each player has their own separate deck of cards that they use to take actions during the game. The journalist player tries to link evidence of the crime and its perpetrators to the Nixon administration, while the White House player tries to suppress the evidence long enough to win re-election for the president. Watergate is for two players, ages 12 and up, plays in around an hour, and it will carry an MSRP of $34.99 when it arrives in early August. Supposedly, probably a Gen Con release. Do want to mention I am not positive if this will release at Gen Con and then you'll have to wait until like September, maybe October to see it in stores. That I don't know. But uh, I wish I had some more uh, images to share. I wish I had a little more news to share about this because this sounds pretty interesting and I really, really dig two player card driven games a la Twilight Struggle, 1960. I'm sure that is nowhere near what this game is going to be, but this does seem kind of interesting. Okay, so that is it for the news today. So we are going to be unboxing and taking a first look at good old Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the starter set, in just a few minutes. Do want to uh, kind of do some house cleaning <laughs> to take care of a few things. I do want to point out that um, I am trying to go to Origins next week. I have reservations at a hotel, which thankfully I can I can cancel at no charge, right, if I have to. Hey, remember, I don't kickstart this show or, or the website or anything like that, right? So, uh, so what I'm doing is I have a game sale going on. It's board games and RPGs that I have reviewed. Of course, I think folks know by now I don't bash up my games and beat them up or anything like that. So do you want to uh, kind of talk about what I've still got available? I have sold a couple of them. So if you notice an image that uh, I do not mention, that means it was sold. But what I've got available, I do have of Dreams and Shadows. And of course, I do want to point out these images are not gonna match up with what I'm talking about right at that moment. But I do have uh, of Dreams and Shadows plus the Monster Within expansion from Greenbrier Games for $35. That is a smoking discount because just the Monster Within expansion, I think, is $25 or $30. I also have Australia from Stronghold Games, Form Trujanum from Stronghold, Kanban Drivers Edition from Stronghold, as well as Fists of Dragonstone, the Tavern Edition from Stronghold, as well as Noria. So quite a few Stronghold Games releases, which I enjoy. I really enjoy them. Uh, all of them got good reviews. It's just they're just not games that the gang 
is going to get to the table a whole lot. That's why I'm getting rid of all of these, is because they're just not going to hit the game table all that often. So I also have Tiny Towns from AEG. That is brand new in Shrink. And I did recently review that. Really, really enjoyed that. So uh, you might want to take a look at that. As far as role-playing games, I've got the Overlight RPG Hardcover from Renegade Game Studios, as well as the Outbreak Undead 2nd Edition Survivor's Guide Hardcover. I do have the 7C Core Book. This was... Uh, this, I do want to point out, had a little ding in the corner when it was sent to me. I also have John Carter of Mars, the role-playing game Collector's Edition Hardcovers in their slipcase as well as Vampire the Masquerade, 5th edition. This is the core book that was released at Gen Con. There's also Millennium Blades, the core game from Level 99 Games. Got some GMT goodies. I've got Ardennes 44, 3rd edition, new and shrink. Labyrinth, the War on Terror, 4th printing. That's the latest printing. That's new and shrink. As well as the Panzer expansion number 4, 1940. That's also new and shrink. There's Time of Crisis, the second printing, and the Time of Iron and Rust expansion together. Cataclysm, a Second World War, Fort Sumter, Hitler's Reich, and Skies Above the Reich. This is the second printing, which is now out of print as well. Plus, from UGG, I have Fortress Sevastopol. So, hopefully, I can, uh, I can move a few more of these to give me some scratch to be able to, to make it to Origins Game Fair. So, I don't know. I don't know. Trying. I'm trying. Do want to mention, if uh, if there's someone that, or a game company that you know is going to be at Origins, and you'd like me to speak with them because you want to learn more about the company and their releases, by all means, shoot me an email. My email's right down there. It's jeffmacklear at thegaminggang.com. So, what's coming up on the show? So the rest of this week got stuff cooking. Like I said, next week might be a little weird because I'm going to be getting ready to go to Origins uh, if I do go, uh, and I'd be leaving Wednesday morning early. So tomorrow is Wednesday, speaking of Wednesdays. So that means it's War Games. It is a War Game Wednesday, so we are going to unbox and take a first look at Fields of Fire 2 from GMT Games which uh, this is a solitaire game. It's kind of card driven. And uh, there's campaigns in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, just like in the first Fields of Fire. Hey, look at this. Rob Moffat's popping in. Good to see you, Rob. Oh, Rob's looking, looking like uh, Origins might be good. Hey, cool. That's another thing I should point out. If you are going to Origins and you see me floating around, as long as I'm not interviewing somebody, you know, if you see me with a mic talking to somebody and there's a camera there, please don't say hi. <laughs> wait to see me later on, right? Or wait until I'm done doing the interview. But if you see me floating around, walking, say hello. Tap me on the shoulder. Say hi. Um, I, I'm flying solo at the show. So once the, exp <laughs> once the exhibit hall closes at night, I probably don't have a whole lot cooking because Origins isn't a convention that the companies really throw many parties at. So although I should reach out to, to Steve and Bonacore over at Stronghold, see if they've got something cooking because they usually, but I think that's usually Gen Con when he does that. Anyway, I'll find out. So, like I said, if you see me strolling around, by all means, say hi. So anyway, so Fields of Fire on... Tomorrow's show, Thursday's show, we're going to take a look. I'm going to page through Cyberpunk 2.0.2.0 because it's not 2020 anymore. It's with the uh, with the periods. This is the second edition of Cyberpunk. Uh, Sammy has a review that she sent me. So I, in conjunction with our looking at this on Thursday, paging through it, I'm going to post her review as well. So uh, I will not be reviewing that the core book. She's already done that for me. All right, so that will be on Thursday's show. Friday's show, I'm up in the air. Well, I'm not really up in the air on what I'm going to cover. I'm just curious, maybe 
<clears throat> maybe not do them both. But I do have some small expansions from AEG. So I've got the latest Smash Up expansion, World Tour International Incident. So I've got that, which when we crack this open, I'm going to take a look. Now, I, I kind of looked at the back of the box. I didn't really, wasn't really paying that hard of attention to it. Because that's how I do my unboxings. It's sort of like, I like to be really surprised like everybody else when I crack it open. Um, for some reason, I think there's something in here that if you're going to various different conventions, you take it with you and you'll get a pin from AEG for that specific convention, I think. So, uh, so Rob uh, is saying, hope your trip was all good. Yeah, it was kind of exhausting. Um, I did all the driving, so... You know, it, it is, that is what it is. But, uh, and then of course I got back, I got back home Sunday night and then turned around right away and went, uh, to the Cubs game yesterday. So I had to be over at, uh, my best friend, Elliot Miller over at voice of E.com had to be at his house at like 10 o'clock. So it's, uh, I'm dragging a little, I'm, I'm dragging a little in my voice is a little, little, uh, out of sorts. But then again, I was yelling <laughs> cheer it at the Cubs game all, all afternoon. So, so anyway, so I'm going to do that. I'm up in the air. If I want to unbox and take a look at space base, uh, the shy Pluto expansion. Cause for one, I don't have space base and I did reach out to Mara at, uh, AEG. I'm taking a guess. My email probably flew under the radar, uh, pointing out that I don't have space base. And that's something that, uh, unfortunately AEG does they'll send out review stuff and they forget that I don't have a copy of their core game and it's sort of like uh what should I do so anyway well we'll see we'll see I might just do I might do both because I can't I can't really feel fill time for uh an entire show just like unboxing a small expansion right okay so that's what's coming up like I said next week uh kind of up in the air We'll see what happens. Of course, if I do go to Origins and I come back, we will have plenty of content for probably at least a month, let alone with interviews and review copies and all that other goody, good stuff, so I should say. All right, one last thing before we jump into the unboxing, and that is, you probably already know that the Daily Dope and the GamingGang.com are essentially not-for-profit endeavors. So if you like the show, if you like the website, if you like the channel, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Yes, Lil Bub's Big Fund does provide grant funds to organizations that care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. This is not special needs animals who are going off to a kill shelter or anything like that. These animals might require some extra care. I'm sure they require some of them a lot of extra care, but still, they do deserve the love that uh, you can give them. And I guarantee you, they will pay that back tenfold unless they bite you. So if they bite you, that's not good. But they won't do that. Anyway, so if you do make a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fun, be sure to shoot me an email. Once again, it is Jeff McAleer at the game, GamingGang.com. Wow, I sort of was like, blah, 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 for a second there. Uh, and I will give you a shout out on the following show, unless you don't want a shout out, which is fine. Because I get a lot of emails from people like, yeah, I kicked a few bucks their way. You don't have to say no. It's like, you're at least not just speaking into the ether and people are ignoring it i guess is what they're trying to point out all right so dan from no enemies here has to rock out good to see you dan thanks for thanks for saying you missed me so i'll see you next time so we're gonna jump into our unboxing of warhammer fantasy roleplay this is the starter set this is the fourth edition of warhammer fantasy roleplay it's from Cubicle 7 Entertainment, my good friends over there. It's designed by Andrew Law, Lindsay Law, Andrew Lesk, or Lesk, guessing on that. T.S. Lukark and Dominic McDowell, both of those 
last two are pals of mine over at C7, with artwork provided by Paul Bourne, Michael Franchina, Ralph Horsley, Andrew Law, Sam Manley, Janine Van Moosel. I'm guessing on these folks. Jonathan O'Donohue, that one's easy. Scott Purdy and Helen Rhea, or Ree. The box set is currently out of print at this moment. Now, I'm not saying you can't still purchase it someplace. It is sold out, as far as I understand, it is sold out on the distributor level. So if you go to the Cubicle 7 website, you will see that it is a pre-order right now because there is a new print run that will be arriving in the third quarter. I'm guessing Gen Con release because I don't think Cubicle 7 is going to show up at Gen Con without at least having the starter set, the box set here. So it does carry an MSRP of $29.99. Of course, if you are going to an online retailer, you're going to definitely probably uh, pay a little bit less. So let's pop on over to the other camera. There we go. Here it is. So uh, I am not sure if Quico is leaving or was just saying, uh, oh, I think they were just saying goodbye to Dan. Because everybody's like, yeah, good night. I kind of glanced. I was like, oh, I think, uh, I think they're just saying good night to Dan. <laughs> so, all right. So let me pop on the old reading specs real quick. I'm going to take the shrink off of this. And of course, as I pointed out before, the way the camera, uh, camera is set up and the lighting is set up, sometimes I get a little bit of glare that makes it difficult for me to read this at an angle. But uh, actually, it looks, it looks pretty good. Okay, so just, uh, I'm going to give you a little of the uh, text from the back. I'm not going to go, you know, read all of it. But uh, the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay starter set contains everything needed to bring the Warhammer world to life. Whether playing for the first time or preparing for your next epic campaign, this box set is the perfect starting point for anyone interested in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. The adventure book invites players of all experience levels into the rich roleplaying background of <laughs> Ubersick, Ubersreich. I think it's Ubersreich. For beginners, an introductory adventure teaches the rules as you play. For experienced hands, there are another 10 scenarios aimed at expanding your <laughs> Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay games, offering new locations, new characters, and new horrors to uncover. Accompanying this, a guide to Ubersreich highlights the bloody history and recent, <laughs> I was getting a little glare there, <laughs> recent <laughs> invasion of Ubersreich. It also examines more than 70 locations in the troubled town, details the surrounding fiefdoms, and introduces a wide array of dark cults plaguing the area. Sweet! That's very nice, very cool. Like I said, I've heard really good things about this starter set. So let's crack it open then. Let's take a peek. And yes, uh, Quico says, uh, yeah, it was it was goodbye to Dan. So cool beans, very cool beans. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that name right. All right, so first off, we got a couple of 10 side dice. Kind of cool, kind of cool dice. Let's take them out of the bag here. Cool, cool design on these. And they are there. It's cut in. I don't. Uh, yeah, it's cut in a little bit. It's not laser printed. So we got percentile dice. So kind of cool. Uh, Got to be honest, though, the design's a little busy. But then again, I'm one of these guys. I just, you know, I just like regular solid dice. It could be blue. It could be red. Okay, so we've got that. Then, looks like we've got stuff bagged up here. Yeah, it's all sealed. Okay, so let's get the hobby knife out and make sure that we don't uh, accidentally cut into one of the books. Or my hand. <laughs> so, I think it's a little more important not to cut into my hand than cut into the books. Okay, I'm going to move the box bottom down there. So if you have not checked out uh, any of my first looks or unboxings for role-playing uh, products, I paged through the whole thing. So 
So, uh, it says, prepare to enter a grim world of peerless adventure. Read this first. Okay, so it tells us what's in the box. So it's like, what the hell is this game? So it's going to tell you what, what is the game. So it's telling us everything that's in here. Okay, so that's that. Oh, it's actually on the back. There's... It's like we got a little bit of a little bit of a fluff on the back there. So there we go. All right, these must be pre-gens. Yeah, there we go. Pre-gen and rated characters. Uh, these are not just cheapo paper. It's a pretty good paper stock for these. So these should hold up to repeated play. I'm guessing, do we have six of them? Or do we have four? What do you think? I'm, I'm guessing six. Watch, it'll be four. Okay, so we've got Human Witch Hunter. Wait a second. So what was this character here? Oh, Human Soldier. Okay. Then we've got, I assume, there we go. Let's get a better look at the image there. One thing that, uh, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, uh, I reviewed the core book. Really enjoyed it. I thought it, thought it was really, really nicely done. Uh, and of course, I've interviewed Dominic, <laughs> you know, every year I interview him at least once. And uh, of course, I had a chance to talk with Graham Davis, did an interview with him at Gen Con last year. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the enemy within Director's Cut or the history of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, be sure to check out uh, the, so it's about an hour long discussion uh, that uh, takes place. It was at Gen Con last year. I did record that, so if you are interested, Graham's a really nice guy. Uh, kind of, you know, kind of, kind of funny, you know, in that uh, like uh, dry British humor way. Which I was going to say is something about the Warhammer, at least the role playing aspect from back in the day. Is there is a, a bit of humor to it. There's a lot of horror and, you know, action and stuff like that. But it's almost like it doesn't take itself way too seriously. So we've got a high elf merchant. These are cool. I like these, uh, these pre-gens. So it kind of explains the, the character sheet. So it's telling us, okay, for the new players, it's like, okay, so this is, these are what some of these uh, attributes in that are. Then we've got the skills and everything. A little bit of the character background. Got an image with the armor. Uh, weapons, trappings. And then a nice, cool, large image on the back. Okay, so that's three. Here comes number four. So we've got Ferdinand Gruba. I am Ferdinand Gruba. Human wizard. Okay, so we've got this. So that's four. That's four pregens. Look, it is six. Sweet. We've got a halfling thief. Okay. Dig the artwork. I like the artwork. I like the art style. It's, uh, I know I have mentioned this during uh, other role playing game unboxings and reviews and things like that. I have nothing against Pathfinder. In fact, I'm looking forward to ha having the opportunity to review a lot of the new stuff that's going to be coming out for the second edition. I'm just not super keen on the artwork. Their artwork is a little too a little too anime inspired for for my personal taste. Especially like the huge weapons and stuff like that. So we've got a couple of maps see what we've got here. So this is Ubersreich and Surroundings. Nice map. And uh, this is cardstock. This is not paper. Cool. Lots of detail on that. Oh, now we get the city. Looks like the city. At, oh, I'm sorry. Town. It's not a city. It's a town. And uh, broken up in different districts, it looks like. We get a breakdown for the guide to it. So we've got that. We have... Uh, is this a different? No, this is the same city. 
Oh, you know what? I bet you this is the player's map. I would take a guess this is probably the player's map that you give give out. What have we got in the back? Uh, attack him up the Duchi. And it's, uh, I guess it's breaking down which like, houses or what factions control what areas. Oh, it's the, it's the fiefdoms. That's what it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, this must be the player. This must be the player map. Okay, different conditions. We got a conditions reference sheet. <laughs> I'm Blaze. <laughs> I'm on fire. That's my condition. I am a Blaze. I uh, I thought that was kind of cool in the um, the core book, because a lot of times with uh, role playing games, for an example, let's say fifth edition, there's conditions. There were a lot of conditions in the uh, Warhammer Fantasy role play core book, way more than are in like uh, D and D. So we get an introduction to Uber's Reich and the Empire. So we've got that. A tests reference sheet. Simple tests, talking about difficulty, dramatic and opposed tests, outcomes. Then we've got the attributes and skills reference sheet. This is a game that doesn't have tons and tons of skills. This is not like a basic role playing uh, from Chaosium, like Call of Cthulhu, for an example, or RuneQuest. There aren't tons and tons of skills, but there are a good number of skills. So we've got that. Injury reference sheet. Uh, yes, I should point out that uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay can be pretty deadly. A lot more deadly than, say, 5th edition D&D. So we've got wounds, critical wounds, regaining wounds. There's a critical wound table. And a combat reference sheet. The 4th edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is uh, a little crunchy, but it's not insanely crunchy as far as the rules and that. That's one of the reasons why I think it's very, very cool that we see not only Cubicle 7 doing a starter set, but we're seeing more and more companies outside of Paizo and Wizards of the Coast producing starter sets to introduce their games to the masses, and they're coming in at a really, really nice price. So this is the adventure book. We'll look at that last, because don't we have a... Oh, you know what? Because it said you learn as you play. I bet you this is the first book we're supposed to look at. So let's uh, let's take a look. Let's page through this. So we've got the contents. This is 48 pages. So it says, uh, welcome to the adventure book. The easiest way to learn any game is to play it. To make this as easy as possible, this book guides you through your first game of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, explain, explaining what to do at every step. Nice, okay. Making the rounds. So that's your first adventure. Yes, and of course, sorry, as we page through, there's probably going to be some spoilers, a little bit of spoiler alert here. Uh, hey, Flaming Heron's popping in. Good to see ya. Sneak it on in. <laughs> the chatted pop pop best. So good to see you. Not cool artwork like that. Okay. Now pulling your blows. Because uh, when you roll a critical hit, you may not necessarily want to actually have that critical hit take place. So especially if you're trying to subdue an opponent, maybe you want to interrogate them, what have you. Um, a lot of times critical hit is going to be fatal. So you be like, well, no, I don't want to do the critical hit. So we've got Law and Order, part two of this. Talking about the some of the NPCs here. Learning the ropes. I get a kick out of, uh, I started watching Good Omens when I got back. Boy, I'll tell you, last Friday just certainly had a whole lot of entertainment arrive on the scene there was the uh the deadwood movie which i was a huge deadwood fan back in the day uh it was a show that i would actually run out to the grocery store pick up some really nice yeah really nice food to make and i'd make dinner 
and I, I had that dinner ready moments before that show would start for the week, and I'd kick back, enjoy my, you know, really, really nice dinner uh, while I watched Deadwood. So, so I'm very happy to see that. Uh, we also had the first episode of Swamp Thing. We had uh, Good Omens arrive on the scene. That was very, very cool. So, yeah, so I started watching Good Omens. I'm not done with it. I haven't finished it. I'm on, I'm like the middle of episode four. And uh, I like it, but it took a little time to kind of get going. And I get a kick out of uh, the Witch Hunter Sergeant. Uh, gosh, I'm trying, Michael, I'm trying to remember his last name. Uh, he was uh, on Laverne and Shirley way back in the day. He was also in, uh, this is Spinal Tap. Michael McKean, I believe is uh, the actor's name. So let me grab a quick sip here. Oh, hey, cool. We get a lot more art here. Get some stat blocks. As you can see, we've got some cool art. I always like really cool artwork. Kind of inspires me as the game master. But I also don't like to see too much artwork because then it's sort of like, hey, I was paying for gaming <laughs> material, you know? I'm not here for an art book. So uh, so these are some scenarios. So it's Adventures in Uber's Reich. Uh, it looks like these are probably more along the lines of kind of uh, almost like maybe adventure nuggets or just little short uh, adventures you can probably slip into a campaign that you've got going on. There is quite a lot of uh, Warhammer fantasy roleplay fourth edition uh, PDFs that are out there. I will mention that when we finish taking a peek through here. So it's not as if uh, <clears throat> this is a system where you got the, the starter set, you play through the adventures that are in this, and then it's sort of like you're twiddling your thumbs waiting for what's next. Of course, I know a lot of people are really, really pumped that uh, the first release in the Enemy Within Director's Cut will be arriving, supposed to arrive in July. Maybe it's late June. But uh, another another item from Cubicle 7 that I expect will be at Gen Con. Although they got a collector's edition, which is uh, pretty pricey, that's, uh, that's going to be coming out. I don't think that would be at Gen Con. I think that's a probably a pre-order that you need to make. So there's the adventure book. Now we've got the guide. I think the guide was something like 70 pages, 68 pages. So let's take a peek at this. Uh, 64 pages. So we've got the opening, which is similar to the core book. The core book opened up with quite a few pages of, of artwork, as well as kind of story to kind of get you into the proceedings. So, uh, so Fleming Heron says, fingers crossed. Uh, I'm not sure what fingers crossed is for. I'm probably missing a bunch of stuff flipping back through chat. Yes, Fleming Heron, thank you for welcoming me back. It's good to be back. Good to be doing a show. Although next week's going to be uh, a quick week too. It might only be a Monday show. I, I'm not sure if there's going to be a Tuesday show because I'm going to be leaving like really early in the morning on Wednesday, if I go to Origins. So that is still up in the air. Okay, so we've got uh, a lot of different background here. So we got the timeline. Talking about Uber's right today, the city rulers, town councils, cults, nobles, a visitor's guide. Talking about different festivals. Yeah, that's pretty cool talking about each of the quarters now so we've got the artisans quarter it's probably giving us just uh some highlights of that quarter there that's right it's it's uh it details i think 70 locations if i remember correctly oh uh fingers crossed coming out sooner rather than later as far as the enemy within director's cut uh, I don't think they're going to have the kind of issues that they had with the core book for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the fourth edition. I think they're pretty solid on their release. But you never know. You never know. So we've got 
the Wif <laughs> Wuhafen? Dwarfen? I don't know. I have no idea. It's the Dwarven area, it looks like, of Ubersreich. Uber's like The Hog Pit, the Red Moon Inn. Then we got the Market Plots. The Merchant Quarter. Which has the Merchant's Guild, the old granary. Sister's Bakery. One, one thing I kind of get a kick out of uh, with Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is that the characters, the player characters are not these, like, you know, they don't start off as like, wow, we're kind of like super heroic already at first level. Like, say, Dungeons and Dragons is now, right? You're, you're, you're pretty tough. Here in uh, in Warhammer, it's sort of like you can be rat catchers. You can like have a really be kind of a. Although I gotta be honest, rat catcher is kind of cool because rat catcher gets a like a dog, is to help them out. And at first level, you're pretty weak in this game, so that uh, even though you're a rat catcher, you still have like a dog that like a terrier or something. So uh, that's actually kind of cool. Talking about the estate. Talking about the precinct. This looks really entertaining. I, I dig this kind of stuff. Looks like we've got we've got a lot to work with here. So we got the sewers. Okay. So I gotta admit. I am I am not a big fan of like sewer adventures. <laughs> it just seems. To me, it just seems like it's always sort of like the, you know, like the knee-jerk kind of setting. I'm not saying anything. I mean, obviously, there's sewers underneath this city. Simply because this isn't, this this is supposed to be tech, like, technologically much more modern than, say, 5th edition or Pathfinder. Because there are gun uh, gunpowder weapons in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. But, I mean, we're talking more like, you know blunder buses and stuff like that uh single shot uh like flintlock pistols or wheel lock no i don't actually yeah maybe i don't know um but yeah we're talking we're not talking about like semi-automatic weapons or anything like that so we get uh, some information information about each of the fiefdoms get the different cults that are working you know on uh in the darkness, behind the scenes, the faceless ones, cult of the Bog King. All right, so that is the guide to Ubersreich. Then we got some other handouts. So it looks like we got some player handouts here. So we got a handouts, rumors you have heard. So this is get the players started here. I would guess, because it says it's a handout. So this is stuff that, uh, no doubt about Uber's Reich that uh, the player characters already know. And we've got uh, a table of items that they can purchase. So, or trappings as well. They're just all single-sided. And then we've got an advertisement for Rough Nights and Hard Days. As well as uh, some Games Workshop stuff. Which uh, looks like these are digital games. So, uh, Rough Nights and Hard Days. I have a PDF. I have a copy of PDF. So, that uh, PDF reviews are done by Sammy. Sammy does the uh, the PDF reviews. So, I, of course, I will look at it. I'm going to take a peek at it. So, we've got uh, the handouts there. We've got the guide to Uber's Reich. We've got uh, some tokens. We've got some tokens here. A punch board of them. I like the box here. Look, look at the look at the box. I mean, think about it. Cubicle Seven could have just said, "Yeah, we'll just make a plain box," but no, it's cool. There's a map. There's a map in the on the bottom of the box. All right, so we've got uh, the tokens there. We've got the handouts. We've got a little advertisement. And we've got the guide to Uber's Reich. We've got the adventure book now. Uh, it's kind of funny because this is more, if you notice, I forget what they 
consider the the actual production. But you see how this is just like a stapled spine here? And then this one is uh, a little more kind of um, kind of like you'd expect for a soft cover. So I'm almost curious. Now, I don't know. I don't know for a fact. It's possible that the guy to Uber's Reich might be something that they'll actually sell. See if we got something on the back here. Like, uh, no, I don't. I was going to say, sometimes uh, that is an indication that that's a... Uh, that's something that would be sold separately, but uh, there's no code on it. All right, so we got the adventure book. We've got the reference sheets here. We got the introduction to Uber's Reich and the Empire. We've got what I believe to be the player's map that we give them that's going to show the, uh, the city itself as well as the fiefdoms. Oops, turn that around there. Got what I believe is going to be the Game Master's map of Uber's Reich, as well as uh, that area of the Empire. So we've got that. We've got the six pre generated characters with the cool artwork. I like these. Those are very cool. Usually, pre gens are just, you know, sheet of paper, dual sides. Uh, so Rob Office says they had Uber back then. Yes, it's it's Lift Reich. Uh, so, Quico says, I really like the Warhammer Old World setting. It's so medieval. It is. It is very... Uh, in ways, it's kind of like a lower fantasy setting than, say, uh, like D&D, Pathfinder. You're not as much magic and stuff like that. Uh, although, there's a lot of, like, like monsters working behind the scenes and things like that. All uh, right. So Madman says, wow, not two thirds empty like the Stranger Things starter set. Love the work Cubicle 7 does. Very pleased with adventures in Middle Earth 5e. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, there's a new, you know, there's a new edition, a second edition for uh, the One Ring that had been announced. So I am looking forward to that. The The One Ring's kind of, kind of lighter mechanically it's it's way lighter than than warhammer fantasy roleplay so we've got the uh, the pre-gens we got the little read this first and then we've got the percentile dice and that is what we find with the starter set for warhammer fantasy roleplay from my friends over at cubicle 7 entertainment uh yes yeah, so the man says wow not two-thirds empty like the stranger things dungeons and dragons now, yeah, which that retailed was uh, twenty four ninety nine, twenty four ninety five, something like that. So not much different. Yes, uh, it's basically day and night between those two. I uh, certainly did not care for the Stranger Things D and D, and I think my review reflected that pretty well. But uh, this looks nice. This looks very nice. I'm going to uh, dig into it and start reading it wheat because i like the core book a lot i really enjoyed the core book i have not had a chance to really dig into some of the pdfs that have come my way from cubicle seven so that is it for today's show do want to mention once again tomorrow is war game wednesday i will be taking your first look unboxing fields of fire 2 from gmt games do want to point out this this box it's not a big deep box but i can tell you we are not going to have much air in this this is actually pretty heavy it's probably i guess about four or five pounds so this is gonna be packed with goodies so hopefully they've kind of straightened out some of the some of the issues that the original fields of fire had uh maybe made the system a little easier to understand fingers crossed i don't know all right so when you are not watching videos on the gaming gang channel please visit the gaminggang.com for the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Oh, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I will be back tomorrow. Everybody in chat, thanks so much for hanging out with me. It's good to be back. Good to be back in the saddle. At least for a few days. Before maybe going to Origins. So, uh, 
Everybody in chat, once again, thanks so much for hanging out. Those who are watching live, thanks for watching live. And of course, if you're watching after the fact, a big thank you to you too. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.